Okay, the unit circle. Um, probably my favorite lesson to teach all year. What is the unit circle? It's a circle with radius equaling 1. So what am I going to use this? And what this does for us, it gives the 6 trig values of common angles. Okay, meaning that if I wanted to find the sine of 210 degrees, we're going to be able to find that by using our unit circle. Okay, so let's first talk about how we get the unit circle. And this is what the unit circle kind of looks like. And these are <coughs> going to be all our common multiples of our 30. 60, and 45 degrees. But before we get to that, let's kind of lay out a few things of what sine, cosine, and tangent all look like on this unit circle. So if I look at this point, think of this right here as the y-axis, think of that there as the x-axis. Okay, so this point right here is going to be some xy point. <coughs> Let's look at what a triangle looks like hanging out there. So if I drop a right triangle down, what does that look like? Okay, well, the hypotenuse is going to be our radius. Along the horizontal is an x-coordinate. Going up is going to be a y-coordinate. So if this is our angle theta, y over r is going to be our sine value. But remember, our radius is 1. So the sine value is just the y value of that point. So the sine of theta is the y value. When I'm looking at cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to be x over r. And again, since our radius is 1, cosine is just x. <coughs> so now tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be y over x. Or we could also look at that as sine over cosine. Now again, the x value, this x point gives us the cosine of theta at this point. The sine gives us, the y value gives us the sine value. Okay, let's lay out some common angles. Let's lay out all our angles first in degrees and radians. So the easy ones. This is 0, 360. And in radians, that's equal to 2 pi, because one rotation is 2 pi. Halfway over here is 180, or pi radians. Up here we have 90 degrees, which is half of 180, so that's pi over 2. Down here, this is 270, or 3 pi over 2. Think about it as 3 pi over 2 is 1 and a half pi. So it's one whole rotation of pi plus another half, 3 pi over 2. Okay, up here, actually, let me highlight these. All of these that I'm highlighting blue are special because those are Multiples of 30. So this angle up here is 30. Okay, what <coughs> ratio is that of 180? Well, that's 30 is 1 sixth of 180. So that's why this is pi over 6. This one up here and this one here are our multiples of 60. 
60 is a third of 180. So that's why this is pi over 3. <clears throat> so all the ones in red are multiples of 60. So I went up 30, 60, <coughs> 120. 120 is twice 60. So that's why this is 2 pi over 3. Down here, this one. This one is 150. Notice how my reference angle would be 30 degrees. So 150 is 5 times 30. That's why this is 5 pi over 6. This reference angle down here would be 30. So 180 plus 30 is 210, which what I do, 210 is 7 times 30. So that's 7 pi over 6. This one over here, reference angle is 30. So this is 330. That's 11 times 30. So that's 11 pi over 6. OK, now going through the multiples of 60. This is 1 times 60, 2 times 60, 3 times 60, 4 times 60. 4 times 60 is 240 or 4 pi over 3. This is 5 times 60, or 300, or 5 pi over 3. Lastly, our multiples of 45. Okay. Our multiples of 45, so this is 45, which is half of 90, so that's why this is pi over 4. So I have 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, or 135. 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, or 225. 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, or 315 degrees. Okay, so please make sure you have this written down with all the angles. That's going to be super important to us because what we're going to do is we're going to now be putting some points on our unit circle. And so that you don't have to recopy it, make sure you have that written down. But before we do that, we need to talk about <coughs> some triangles. Okay, this right here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The hypotenuse is going to be the radius of our unit circle, which is 1. The side ops, the 30 degree is half of that. And the 60 degree angle is going to be root 3 over 2, because it's 1 half times root 3. So if I take this triangle here and I put it on our unit circle, let's look and see what that looks like. So I've taken and I've put this 30, 60, 90 again. This was 30. Our hypotenuse is always 1. So going up there, our y coordinate was 1 half. The x coordinate here was root 3 over 2. So at 30 degrees, this tells me the cosine and sine of 30 degree angles. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this triangle and we're going to flip it around to this axis over here. So now our triangle is flipped. Notice what happens. The values don't change. Just what becomes, what changes? Remember, this was our y-axis. This was our x-axis. So what becomes negative? Our x-coordinate. What happens if I were to flip this triangle down into our third quadrant? When I flip that down into the third quadrant, okay, what changes? The numbers don't change. This is still 1 half. This is still root 3 over 2. 
But what changes is both of our values are negative. Now what happens when I flip that over here into the fourth quadrant? So now when I flip that over into our fourth quadrant, the values don't change, just our y becomes negative. So notice how whenever I had a 30 degree reference angle, the values were the same, except some were negative and some were positive. Okay, now let's go through and do this with a 60 degree angle. So going back to our 60 degree angle. So our radius is still one. This angle up here now is going to be 60. This angle is 30. I apologize, I did that wrong. Um, they need to flip. I noticed they did it wrong because it didn't make sense. This angle is 60 because that's going to be, this is going to be the point at our origin. This is going to be 30. So I have one half there. I have root 3 over 2 there. So now let's take and put this triangle on our axis. So now we had our 60 degrees. This is 60. We had one half along the x, root 3 over 2 along the y. So our x is one half and root 3 over 2. So that's now, at this point, I know the cosine and sine of that angle. Now we could do the same thing with these, with this same triangle. I'm going to flip it over here into this quadrant and see what happens. I'm going to flip it down here, see what happens. I'm going to flip it over here and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to do that and then show you guys what happens. So now we have our next value. And this point, again, remember, the only thing that changes is the x's become negative. Down here, both our values are negative. Over here, just the y's are negative. Make sure you put in a little negative. I missed my negative. Okay, now let's look and see what our 45 looks like. So now with our 45, okay, our hypotenuse is 1. Normally that's root 2. So I have to divide every side by root 2 and simplifying my radicals, we get root 2 over root 2 and root 2 over root 2. So now let's take and put that on our unit circle. Okay, so now this point, since both sides were equal, this was root 2 over 2, I apologize, and root 2 over 2. Again, getting me the cosine and sine at that angle. Now again, take it, flip the triangle on all of the other three remaining quadrants and see what happens. So now that I've flipped those around, our 45s, we have here, again, the only thing that changes is our x's become negative. Here, both x and y is negative. Here, just our y's are negative. Okay, now let's talk about the values on our quadrants, our quadrantal angles. Remember, our radius is 1, so what would that point be? That point would be 1, 0. This point up here would be 0, 1. This point over here, negative 1, 0. This point down here, 0, negative 1. So again, what these are doing me, doing for me, I should say, is say I needed to find the sine, like I said earlier, of 210 degrees. You go to where your 210 degree angle is, that's cosine, sine. So the sine of 210 degrees, negative one half. Okay? And I tried to color code it for you guys. I think color coding really helps out. Here is maybe a little prettier 
of a version um, that you might want to make sure you have everything correct. Where again, we have cosine, sine, they go in alphabetical order. So now our questions. And I'm going to be jumping between that previous slide and this slide. So sine of 120 degrees. So you go to 120 degrees. 120 degrees is right here. We go cosine, sine, root 3 over 2. So this is equal to root 3 over 2. Tangent 225. Find 225. Tangent is sine over cosine, so that's going to be equal to 1. Cosine of 11 pi over 12. So find where your cosine of 11 pi over... 11 pi over 12 isn't on there, Marnell. I bet you, you meant 11 pi over 6. Make that 11 pi over 6. I don't know why I didn't catch that. So 11 pi over 6... 11 pi over 6... Cosine, sine, root 3 over 2. <clears throat> okay. Here are your lesson questions. Lesson question. So it's multiple choice. So find the sine of 210 degrees for me. And make sure that is submitted on time. <clears throat> 